In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. We come together again this morning to celebrate Mass. As we continue this time, we will celebrate Mass virtually. And on this day, in a special way, we thank God for St. Martin of Tours. It is his feast day today. He is a bishop and a great example in our church of strength and faith, even against adversity. And so at this time, and under his intercession, brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You intercede for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who are glorified in the Bishop St. Martin, both by his life and death, make new, we pray, the wonders of your grace in our hearts, that neither death nor life may separate us from your love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to Titus. Beloved, remind them to be under the control of magistrates and authorities, to be obedient and to be open to every good enterprise. They are to slander no one, to be peaceable, considerate, exercising all graciousness toward everyone. For we ourselves were once foolish, disobedient, deluded slaves to various desires and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful ourselves and hating one another. But when the kindness and generous love of God our Savior appeared, not because of any righteous deeds we had done, but because of his mercy, he saved us through the bath of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit whom he richly poured out on us, through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that we might be justified by his grace and become heirs in the hope of eternal life. The word of the Lord. The response is, The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall want nothing. In verdant pastures he gives me repose. Beside restful waters he leads me, he refreshes my soul. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. He guides me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. Without your, with your rod and your staff that give me courage. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. You spread the table before me, and the side of my foes you anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. In the circumstances, I give thanks, for this is the will of God. For you in Christ Jesus. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus continued his journey toward Jerusalem, he traveled through Samaria and Galilee. As, his, as he was entering a town, ten lepers met him. They stood at a distance from him and raised their voice, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said, Go show yourselves to the priests. As they were going, they were cleansed. And one of them, realizing he had been healed, returned, glorifying God in a loud voice. And he fell at the feet of Jesus and thanked him. He was a Samaritan. Jesus said in reply, Ten were cleansed, were they not? Where are the other nine? Has none but this foreigner returned to give thanks to God? Then he said to him, Stand up and go, your faith has saved you. The Gospel of the Lord. 
Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. On our gospel today, which is according to Luke, we hear a story in which Jesus heals ten people, ten lepers who had a terrible disease, and he removed that disease from them. And then, after a time, only one of them came back to thank him. Now, of course, Jesus doesn't do anything because he wants thanks. He doesn't need to be thanked, and he does things out of his love for us. But he wanted to use this as an example to those who were watching, to those who saw this man come and thank him and say to him, the other nine have not come. They received a great blessing. They were very, very fortunate, and God chose to answer their prayer. But then they forgot to give thanks back to God. It's almost as if they forgot why they were healed in the first place. And only one of them remembered that he was only healed because God had mercy on him, because God loved him so much. And so he came back and asked for forgiveness. I mean, and asked for, and told Jesus, thank you, excuse me. Now, what does this teach us? And especially, I think it's important for us always to remember, especially as we get closer to Thanksgiving this month, how thankful we should be every time we are blessed. Whenever something good happens to us, when we overcome an illness, when we get through something difficult and find ourselves on the other side, perhaps stronger because of it, when we receive something that we've wanted, even if it's a material thing, something good, a new present, a new toy, a, a new device, something that we've always, that will make our life more fun, better, or easier, whatever it might be. All the good things that can happen to us when God gives us a grace, if we have a good experience in prayer, if we do well on a test, if we do well at work, think about all the wonderful things that happen to you throughout your life and throughout your day. Very often, we only think to go to God when something bad is happening or when we're, if we need him to help us with something or if we're you know, frightened and we go to him with prayer. And that's good, we should do that. But we forget on the other end to thank him sometimes when things are going well, when things are going our way, and that is just as important. So just like this leper who came back to thank him that his life had been renewed and saved, we too every day should thank God for our blessings. Think about at the end of your day what it was you were blessed with and thank God what it is that you did that you messed up in or maybe sinned and ask God's forgiveness, and what it is that you need so you can ask for God's help. But what was first? It was, it was thanking him, having an attitude of being thankful and of being gracious so that we don't take for granted the many, many blessings we have. And let us now turn to the Lord with our prayers and bring to him our petitions. We pray in this day for the church that it might be a community of thanksgiving and giving worship and honor to God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our country and our world, that it be a place where everyone receives the blessings that they deserve. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the sick and suffering, and especially those going through great hardship of any kind, that they might experience the strength and presence of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have died, that they might give eternal thanksgiving in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray for the intentions of Steve and Terry Smith, for whom this Mass is intended. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we ask you to hear these our prayers, and if they be your will, to grant them through Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Sanctify these offerings, we pray, Lord God, which we joyfully present in honor of St. Martin, so that through them our life may always be, may always be directed whether in tribulation or in prosperity, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For in the marvelous confession of your saints, you make your church fruitful with strength ever new, and offer us sure signs of your love, and that your saving mysteries may be fulfilled. Their great example lends us courage. Their fervent prayers sustains us in all we do. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we praise you, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Charles, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. 
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. And let us now pray the prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Grant to us who have been restored by this sacrament of unity, O Lord, perfect harmony with you and with all of your things, that just as St. Martin submitted himself entirely to you, so we too may give glory in being truly yours. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, we will continue this way of having Mass. There will be a Mass posted for tomorrow on Thursday and then Friday. And uh, that will finish out this week, and that will finish out my quarantine. I'll be back this weekend. I am still feeling fine, so thank you again for all your prayers. And um, hopefully we'll see you soon. So thank you for joining us for this virtual Mass. Um, and know that you're in my prayers, and let us continue to keep the world in our prayers as well. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.